Hey guys, welcome back to another Groundbreak Games quick tutorial on using the Paragon assets to do cool stuff. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to set up a better idle stance, the one that was provided, and which includes some really cool facial animations, kind of looking around puzzled, and also some emotes that you can use to, like this one where he's checking his sword out. There's a few other ones too, you can decide which ones you want, or use several, or randomize them. Uh, it's kind of your choice. And the other interesting thing I found was different run sprint animations. So he can move with his sword out walking and then in a sprint state his magical sword flips to his back. And when he wants to attack, it's back again. So that's uh, what is in store for today's video. Stick around. Hey guys, welcome back and let's get started. The first thing I think we should do is go to the up to edit project settings, open that, and then we're going to go to input on the left. At the top we're going to add two more action mappings here. So just hit the plus sign twice and come down and we'll rename the first one sprint and rename the second one emote I guess and then open up sprint and I'm gonna change that to shift left shift you guys can set it to whatever you need to and on emote I'm gonna use the T key scroll down and grab it and so we're all set there you don't have to save just exit out save that anyway though and um, the next thing we should do is go to third person blueprint blueprints and open up your third person character here let's just drop our action maps so we have sprint oops helps if you spell it correctly and emote let's kind of get those down here out of the way Pile and save. Now for sprint, what we'll have to do is get the character movement over here. Drag that in. And on pressed, we're going to set it, drag off, and set max walk speed. So when we press sprint, we're going to go to the full speed of 600. That is our default max, which if you click on character movement, you'll see all of the default character movement settings over here on the right. You can look through those and change them around however you want. On released, uh, let's just copy this again. And we're going to set this to 179. Actually, let's set it to 175. Oop, and make sure you drag off character movement, unlike me, and connect that to the target and compile and save that. Okay, and then underneath that, we're come up here and copy this. going to play another montage off here. And the last thing we'll do while we're here, we still need to get this montage and then we need to change our 2D blend space to reflect this. But first, we're going to go down below this and type begin play. Grab the begin play event. And that's going to fire once as the characters spawn into the world. So drag off that, and actually don't drag off that. Come up here, grab this bottom 175, and we just want to set that so that that is now set into the world. 
So we have begin play, we are set as a default to 175. If we press shift, we're at 600 and let it go, we go back to 175. So that looks good. We need to get the montage play, emote montage. So just come back to content folder and I think it's just called emote. Let's just see what's here. And there's a few emotes. Uh, yeah, quite a few. So you could you could randomly switch between them. Let's just start with one, and maybe I'll come back and show you guys how to randomly switch between all of them. I saw a really cool one. Uh, the sword point. Sword point one. So just type in point, and uh, I made sure this works, so I already created the montage. But just right click on the animation, the green with the green bottom, right click, create, and create anim montage, and I just left the name the same, and um, hit compile and save, and you'll have created a montage just like this. So you can do this for any of the emotes, look through them. If you want to toggle through them, you can. Um, there's, you know, there's several different ways of going about it, but or you can set them up to randomly change if you hit the T key, or you can set individual keys for different emotes. It's up to you. But I'm going to use this one, so that's all good. We just need to go back to third-person character and change it. All right, and so now we just need to set our blend space so that this is reflected correctly and add some better animations. Okay, so we'll head back to content. And then I'm going to go to mannequin animations and open up the third person idle run 2D blend space. And if you move, if you hold shift and you move this, you will be able to see um, where the character's at as far as the settings, the division settings, or these grid lines are. So the way that the 2D blend space works is it's just using one uh, variable at the bottom, which is speed. So we have 0 through 375, and anything over 375 is going to play this last animation. So we have the typical third person settings at the moment. We're going to change those to Quangs. And to do that over here in the asset browser, uh, just type in idle and if you come down to the one that says just idle and you'll see at the bottom very bottom right corner there it says folder I can't show you because if I move the mouse it it moves the picture or the picture is gone so uh, if you look the one that's disappearing there if you look at the bottom right corner it tells you the file path and it should be the one that's in the Quang animations folder so it's the just regular idle just drag that on top of the old one and drop that and so now our our sword is no longer clipping into the leg which is great looks looks a lot better so the next one we'll just type WFD and you should see jog underscore forward and that's gonna be our next animation you can drag that into the middle and then we don't need this one anymore so click once on this dot here and just hit the delete key Need that so uh, the very last one we want to uh, just leave w or FWD and look for sprint instead of jog it should just be down a little below and it should say sprint forward or sprint underscore FWD drag that onto the last one and so you should see if you hold shift and and you drag your mouse you should see a transition to where if we're all the way up to almost uh, 184 in speed the sword is still out and then if we go over that it quickly switches to the back and we're sprinting so as we hit shift we should go in a transition between these two and we know we set shift to 600 which would be way out here so any as soon as we hit it it should be a nice quick transition to the back so anyway hit save exit out of that and let's uh, give it a shot so now we are 
in our idle position, you can see the sword is no longer looking terribly clipped into the leg, which is good. And we've got two attacks, left and right. We can attack while moving, which is cool because we uh, you don't want to be stuck. And I think we can increase that speed. I'll, I'll make some adjustments and show you how to make some adjustments. We can increase the walk speed a little bit and just adjust the animation by giving, or the blend space by giving it a couple more divisions. Uh, but it should be pretty easy to fix. So we can still move. We'll have a nice smooth walk for that once I get it figured out. And then uh, if you hold shift, you should be able to sprint and your sword will quickly go to your back. So you're in your like sprinting mode and you stop your sword magically flips to your hands, which I think is kind of cool and very quick and easy. It's a magical sword, <laughs> but it gives you an idea how to kind of play around with the animations provided. Maybe you guys can come up with some better combinations of animations. And if you have any questions about specifically customizing uh, with an idea that you have just let me know and I'll see if I can figure it out for you but you have a nice little transition there it looks better than it did and then now for the emote if you hit T you should do this cool checking out a sword emote and that's it